What's up, guys? It's a Friday morning. About 11.30. Figured I'd take a walk up my road here. Street 20. Answer a couple questions. Give you all my updates. What's up? Uh, first of all, the website, Road to 1000, uh, is doing good. I had some issues with the donation button, but uh, that's all fixed now. If you received a, if you received an email saying your payment, your donation was denied, it's because with the donation uh, button, it was going to a different part of my account and they required me to have a bank account in the US before to verify before I could accept those donations and of course I don't <clears throat> I wasn't aware of this so I denied the uh, donations and then I sent an email to everyone explaining what happened and just to resubmit I had I, I got it all figured out and sorted so now it should go through exactly to me like a regular donation would <clears throat> and that button's working because I just got another one today so we're we're all good there I, I was also I don't know if anybody's ever had a WordPress site but uh I had an issue with one of my pages uh, the the one of the important pages, my updates page, I would go to update the amounts and it wouldn't update. It would update in my editor, but when I went to hit preview or to go look at the site after I updated and published it, uh, there were no changes. I went online, they said it was something about the cache, either on my end or a WordPress end. So I did everything I could on my end and that didn't work. So I deleted the page, I just re-uploaded it again. And that seems to be working. I seem to have found the fix for that. So yes, right now the total is 155. And I appreciate all of you who participate. This is going to be a, a really great thing. I'm really excited about it. And I'm not gonna make my channel all about that I don't want you to think I'm just <clears throat> pressing for money 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 all the time but I am very happy with it and of course whenever you start anything new you know you got to get some traction out there you gotta you got to get the word out and do everything you can it's like when when you promote uh, you know a product if you've ever done affiliate marketing you have to you have to write the blog post, make the YouTube video, or or get get that product link out to in front of as many people as possible, so you can make you know some sales and make some commissions. So if it seems like I'm prattling on about it, it's just because I'm excited. I'm going to be really excited when we hit our goal, and I get, I can actually teach 20 students a day. That's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. And I appreciate you. Now, if you go to the, uh, if you go to the Road to 1000 page, the link is down below. You'll see all the changes I made. I also put a new article up there. Like I said, I plan on updating it often with my, with my thoughts and things that are happening. So I just added a new blog post, What Teaching Teaches You. If you plan on coming over here to teach, <laughs> something you can take and uh, look forward to because it's, uh, it's one of the benefits <laughs> of teaching that a lot of people don't talk about. All right, so we're down here on Wapbo Road now. Actually, last night I was down here on Wapbo Road the same section and even though it might seem 
fairly dry, if not a bit muddy. Last night, with a big umbrella over me because it was pouring rain, this whole section was absolutely flooded. I mean, it was flooded. The whole area. If you wanted to get down this part of Wabo Road, right down here, you had to walk through water. They came up a little bit about halfway up my shins. <laughs> and of course I was in my flip-flops with my shorts on. And all I kept thinking was looking at that breakish water. I was like, I hope I don't have any cuts, uh, small little cuts on my feet or legs. Because I don't know what's in that water. It was dark, it was raining, I had that big umbrella limiting my vision also. And of course, as you know, the roads here and the sidewalks and everything are not exactly stable as it is. So not being able to see where you were taking your next step was pretty, uh, it was slow going and a little frightening at times. You didn't want to, you definitely didn't want to take a, take a header body and face first into that water. Of course, as soon as I got home, I took a shower and scrubbed up because I wanted to be sure. But we got a torrential rain last night. <clears throat> and that's okay. It actually felt good as long as you didn't have to be out in it. But of course I was. Uh, someone asked me on my uh, Instagram, <coughs> they sent me a message saying that they're taking the same uh, TEFL course as me and if they could ask me some questions. And, and the main question was, uh, what do you do there for fun after you've been there for so long? You know, what do you do for fun? Because Siem Reap's a, or really, it, it's a smaller town, if you think about it. You can walk almost anywhere. And, you know, after you've seen Anchor Wat and you've experienced Hub Street and you went to uh, see the bamboo show and the puppet show and the circus. And, and yeah, a, mo a lot of those things are meant for tourists. You know, they're going to be here for a few days to get in as much of that culture as they want. But as an expat, what do you do for fun? And once again, I can only answer from my experience what I like to do. And my answer is this is what I like to do. <laughs> I like to walk. I've mentioned this before and I'm, I'm gonna say it again. Um, I like to walk around this town. I'm still fascinated by it. I'm still thankful that I'm here. I try to find something good and positive every day that I'm here, even if I'm having a, a lousy day. And usually the thought, you know, I just think, man, just, just think. You know, two years ago, two and a half years ago, when I when this was just an idea, a seed planted in my head, and a vague idea of how this was actually going to happen, I think in the back of my mind, I thought, man, it, it might not ever happen. I, I don't know if this is ever actually going to happen. I had everything set up, I was saving all my money, starting to sell my things and all that. But there's always that little thought in the back of your head, you know, like, uh, you know, the what ifs. And so I try to wake up every day and say, wow, I, I actually did it. You know, all the things I was worried about never happened. And I'm actually here. And despite some things that are very, very different in what many would feel is a bad way compared to the West, the fact that I'm here every day 
and I choose to be here and I like being here doing something I really love which is teaching uh, that's what makes me happy that's what gets me out of bed every day and there's and if you watch my videos long enough you know sometimes I'll just be walking along not aware of what's happening and all of a sudden something will happen an event of some kind that, that I didn't know about I'll just stumble upon it there are still many many places <laughs> in town I have not yet explored I haven't gotten around to them yet so for me back in the States it was a matter of fighting boredom I had all my distractions I watched more TV than I care to mention out of fear of embarrassment and ridicule <laughs> if I wasn't doing that I was playing video games if I wasn't doing that I was watching Netflix I never got out never did anything so this complete change this complete 180 in my lifestyle change even though it's been over a year and a half now I still it's still fresh to me it's still something I enjoy because it's something I thought I, I would never do I mean three years ago before I even knew what a tuffle was if somebody would have said you're going to be out walking talking to people you don't know trying to understand a language that you don't quite get I would have laughed at them I would have said no I want you to stay inside inside is good outside is bad <laughs> stay inside I have my TV I have my computer I have my Netflix I have my video game systems I do not need anything else so yeah I think <clears throat> There are always uh, things to do, new things to discover here, no matter how long you're here. Even though I hear some people say, uh, you know, I lived in CM Reap and after six months there's nothing to do. You're going to get bored. And that might be true for some people. I'm not saying my results are typical or, or you know, it's going to be the same experience for anyone else, but... I have not found that to be true for me. So that's what I like to do for fun. I like to get out. I like to make my YouTube videos. I like to help people if I can, answer their questions. And like I said, during rainy season, I'll be... Going back to what I was saying, uh, back in the States, rainy season, snowstorm season where I came from, whatever, it wouldn't have really bothered me because I'm only going to be out there in it long enough to go to work and come home. And then I'm going to be holed up like a rat inside my little nest, <laughs> staying away from the rest of the world. But here, I actually find, uh, you know, during rainy season, when it rains a lot, and a few times a day, I'm disappointed because, you know, I ha if I have to teach at a certain time, and then by the time I get done, it's starting to rain, so I can't go out. I spend way too much time in my apartment. Now, there are things I need to get done online and I have to have access to my Wi-Fi as horrible as it is at times but occasionally I would like to just take a break from that get up and go for a walk but it's pouring outside so I can't Of course, I will say this, I am much more productive online because of that. So, I, again, trying to find the positive even in the negative. Because I can't go out, I'm like, well, 
I might as well do this then, and I might as well do this. I might as well finish this review. I might as well write this blog post. So on the one hand, it does help my procrastination issue. But on the other hand, I get a little stir crazy sometimes. But that's okay. This is only going to last for about another month or so. Then we'll be back to hot, sunny days all day again. And somebody else asked me about teaching here without a degree, and again, or without a temple certificate, I mean. And again, I do not advise it. There are going to be people who say, Ah, don't listen to Dave. I taught there without a degree. I know people that have taught there without a TEPL certificate. It'll be okay. I'm saying I do not advise it. The competition is heavy in CM Reap for teaching jobs. And without a TEPL certificate, you might be able to get one of those jobs, but you're going to command a much lower salary than people who actually have one. And if that works for you, that's great. If you have a temple certificate and you can make $1,000 a month or same school, same hours, same job, without a temple certificate, you only want to make $600 a month and that's fine with you, then go for it. But it's not really a big deal to get a certificate. It's not. It's... Go to the International Temple Academy. InternationalTempleAcademy.com Talk to an advisor. They don't try to sell you on their program. They are there to answer questions to make sure that it's right for you. That this is something you will actually do. It's a great program. You will learn everything you need to know about teaching in a classroom so you're prepared that first day. You'll know how to put together a lesson plan. What's up, man? <laughs> put together a lesson plan. Deal with uh, disciplinary issues. Take control of your classroom. It'll help you be organized for the things that you're going to have to do once you start teaching here. But anyway, talk to an advisor, see if it's for you. And if you sign up, it's going to take uh, two to three months to take, depending on if you want the extra courses after the initial one. If you want the specialization in teaching children, you know, younger children, you can take that after your initial course is over. And it might take you another month to get it. But two or three months out of your life and a little bit of money I mean, if this is something you really want to do, I mean, sincerely, not just something you want to do as a hobby to try out, but if you know you want to move abroad, not just Cambodia, but anywhere, and you know you want to teach English as a living, for a living, then you definitely need a TEPL certificate. It doesn't take that long. It's not that hard or difficult. It will be challenging at times because you're going to learn things you don't know yet. But any good program should do that, should challenge you a little bit. All right, that's about all I wanted to say. Remember all my links are down below, the Road to 1000 page, the channels, the other channels I uh, have, Make Money with Dave, Sang Lai's uh, cooking channel is down there. Her cooking channel is down below. All my social media links. And all that good stuff. Alright. I will talk to you guys. In the next one.